What up, what up? This is another edition of the Mic Check right here on Revolt TV. Uh, you know this face, it's from the Roundup with Ivy Rivera, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We have a special guest in the building, just dropped a new project, High Tide. Uh, Laven Callie's in the building. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, man, listen, I'm just trying to get through this whole quarantine situation, trying not to go yeah. stir crazy, but, you know, this is uh, this is our new normal right now, so I can't even be mad at it. Right. Um, you know, since we're talking about the quarantine, uh, we're going to get to your project, Hot Tide. Uh, first of all, let me ask you, how are you dealing with this whole pandemic? Like, what do you, is it creatively messing your mind up? Is it can't get out and see your peoples? And how, how are you feeling? How are you fucking with it? Um, I mean, it, when it started, it was at a time where I was like already locked in the studio. I was finishing High Tide. And I had nothing to do but finish that shit. So I was, mm. you know, it kind of it kind of worked out in that sense of being inside, having to focus and finish the project. But then the project comes out, and you want to do shows, you want to do a release party, you can't do none yeah. of that. So it's uh, it's a little weird, but I'm staying creative and trying to work out, keep my body together and my mind and all that. And yeah, really to, to be healthy and get through this. Was it was it um was it affecting you creatively when you started to hear about the news about the quarantine and the, and the the long lasting effects? Like, did that throw you off track while you were creating High Tide? Um, it threw the release off track. So it yeah. was supposed to come out probably like a month before it did, yeah. and you know how everything just got pushed back. So the label wanted to push it back and and uh, just get a grip on the situation before we dropped it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's forcing us to do new creative things. So you're seeing like a lot of at-home concerts and at-home yeah. videos. And, and we're all getting our like YouTube blogger game <laughs> on. So that's kind of like, you know, that, that, that's the new type of creativity, I guess. What's something new that you picked up being in a house all day I don't know if it's working out. I don't know if it's cooking. I don't know if it's any books that you picked up, new books that you picked up. Um, what's something new that you developed, you know, outside of the music? Um, right before the quarantine, I was, like, getting interested in really learning how to play guitar. Okay. And I've been spending these last, like, 60 days or whatever, like, really jamming on guitar and nice. figuring that out and, and really, you know, practicing my keys and, and uh and just like reading up on things that are interesting to me i uh i've been watching a lot of videos on youtube of just like everything from like the last dance michael jordan stuff to like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah crazy like existential youtube weirdness so like i'm i'm just trying to get you know you know stay active and learn and and learn instruments and stuff like that yeah i can tell you myself uh, i'm i'm now going down a rabbit hole of YouTube documentaries and house like haunted houses and nonsense and like shit about the Titanic yeah. that I didn't know about. It's just like when you I got any recommendations. Uh, honestly, bro, I I don't want to change your mind, bro. I wanted to keep you in a positive spirit because <laughs> I I'll be watching some bullshit and my girl be getting mad at me. She's like, "Why are you watching this stuff? Like, this makes no sense. This has no relevancy to what's going on." I'm like, "It's interesting. Like, it keeps me keeps my mind motivated. It's something. It's, yeah, anything. it's something. It's something." Um, yeah. But let's 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 track back to your beginnings. You know, you come from a household of musicians. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, particularly, tell me, father, mother, brother, sister. Where where does it you know start from? Like everybody. So my mom, and my dad, both um, are musicians, and mm -hmm. my mom, my mom is really like the only, may, like active musician from her side of the family. I know her. My grandma and her mom played piano, but. Everyone else, you know, kind of took a different route. But on my right. dad's side, all my aunts and uncles, you know, everybody, my dad's one of 12. So I have wow. like 12, 12 people on, in, in, you know, on that side of the family that are extremely musical and they have kids that are musical. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know how that is just like, right, like everywhere around me, I look through his music. What were the holidays like when the holidays came together? What was the music being played? You know, Easter, Insane. Thanks, Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays. Insane. Like insane yeah insanity just like you know they're down in florida in miami so i would go down to florida in like the summers and for grandma's birthday and christmas yeah. and stuff like that and those were always like literally exactly how you would imagine just like a family of musicians coming together 
hooking up right. a little stage in the backyard, like yeah. everybody jamming and singing and all the aunties sing and my yeah. mom and everybody just like choir. Like it's a, it's an amazing feeling. So that was definitely where my musical, like, you know, heartbeat came from. Did it, was there, was there a push from the family for you to pursue as well? Or did it naturally come to you or were you kind of resistant? Cause I know in an interview you said you were kind of anti-music at that t- at the time you were growing up. So how did, where did, where did it click yeah. for you? For me, it was like, as a kid, I didn't really want to do piano lessons. I didn't, which I regret. If anybody's watching this, <laughs> anybody watching this who's debating whether or not they should take piano lessons or whatever, do it. Right. 100% yeah. do it. That's Even the one thing you, re- you regret. Big regret because, you know, now I'm, at this point in my life, I'm learning the things that I should have learned when I was like eight, nine, ten. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but it's it's still amazing. I, you know, I spent my childhood really focusing on sports, and my mm-hmm. family, you know, there's a lot of athletes as well. But it was definitely not like the uh, the obvious decision. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, I growing up in LA, outside all the time, um, yeah. playing basketball. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting into golf, and just like you know, that was my heart was there until around like 18, 19, I started to fall back into love with music when I got my laptop and I could, I had the music in my own hands, I could produce and all that. Yeah. So, you know, I want to transition into you playing golf for a D1 school. Where, where the hell yeah. does the <laughs> golf, where does that come from? Where does the, 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 the decision to say, nah, not basketball, not baseball, not track or field. Nah, I'm going to yeah. go with golf. I'm going to go with golf. Like, where did that come from? I think it was like the initial, like the like me getting gassed up at first off of like people saying that I was like really good for not having played before. Yeah. At, I was like 13 and I went to a driving range in LA with my homies. And like at that time it was, we were going like as a joke, you know, like it, mm-hmm. my only time like spending around golf courses by then was like bringing an air horn to the fence and like trying to mess with people. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't ever like serious. He was one of those, he was one of those kids. <laughs> I was a I was like a troublemaker. So then I um I went to the driving range as a joke, yeah. and everyone around me was like, "Yo, like, you really never done this before?" Mm-hmm. And just when you're a kid and people are gassing you up like that, like people that you don't know, it's not just like your mom yeah. or whatever telling you something. Yeah. I was like, "Damn, like really?" And and uh, and for me, I've always had like a, a weird connection to Tiger Woods when I was a a little kid they they like wanted me to play tiger in a biopic and like oh wow i was gonna play baby tiger <laughs> oh shit <laughs> and, okay. uh, and and just like looking like him as a kid people always would compare me so then finally when golf came into the picture it was just like all these little things in doctrine in my mind and like gas yeah. me up thinking like, yeah. <laughs> maybe i'm supposed to be tiger woods like, maybe i'm <laughs> maybe i'm the next one maybe i'm the next one <laughs> yeah so so that that led to me begging my mom to you know find like any way that I could be a part of like a golf camp or something and she went super hard like to find opportunities because golf is super expensive yeah of course like golf is Uh, golf is not accessible to people that don't have a ton of bread or whatever like just reach the resources to to actually like do the the equipment yeah crazy yeah so so for you know for me and my journey and for my family like it was it was a lot of my mom like just like making sacrifices and finding like little grants and and things and there was a uh, there was like a a uh, camp at a public course near me mm-hmm. and there had it was like you know 13 to 15 year olds and I did that and that was a really positive experience and then that kind of led to people saying yo if you practice you could get into college and you can wow. maybe do this as a professional and it kind of just you know it was like that so I wanted to I wanted to play in school and I was able to do that that's really really dope do you still play today Oh yeah, I was just playing last night. Nice. <laughs> I went. To the, I went to the driving range. They just opened up golf in California, so I'm, I'm getting back out there. That's dope. That's dope. All right, so we 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 did the, we're doing the golf thing, and then now after school or during school, the music starts to come back and it starts to rear its head back to you. Dude, it was right when it started. It was crazy. So I did. So I I got into school. I, I signed my uh, letter of intent in in uh in October. Right. Of my senior of my senior year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was working so hard on golf. Like I didn't really, you know, I didn't really like party in high school or whatever. So I wanted to to just like kind of get my uh my energy, my yayas out. 
like senior year before I go mm. back into the the golf world in college and really like you know dedicate myself to that. So I was I was like tinkering in music and it kind of started there where I slowly realized like you know this version of making music where you can make beats and you can yeah. send beats around and you can bring your laptop to the homie's house and just yeah. plug into an interface and boom there's a universe of music that you can just create. Yeah. I didn't really you know my the way that I would make music with my family and in high school before that I was in the jazz band as a drummer and nice. my you know it was it was a lot of like real music and and band type of stuff but it wasn't like you know cooking up beats and and like DJing and producing in that sense and when that came into my world I was like ah like I should have been doing this and it was a little bit of a tug and pull or whatever you call it um <laughs> my, my freshman year you know because I'm, I'm golfing I'm playing I'm working out every day I'm traveling yeah. every day. I'm yeah. playing golf at a high level but I'm also constantly on the laptop I'm driving back and forth to LA and yeah and I'm, and I'm just you know trying to balance both and it got to a point where the music started to then outrace the golf and I wasn't really in love with the culture of the game yeah as much as just my when I was a, when I was a kid, I was playing by myself a lot, and then when I got into that world, and I was surrounded by, you didn't like you, you didn't like what it looked like. You didn't like what it felt like. I didn't like what it felt like. I didn't like I didn't like how it was how it was seeming, and I didn't want that to be the you know my day in day out energy. Right. And right. and it and it inspired me even more so when I started getting recognized in music to then use this platform to to bring kind of a inclusivity and mm -hmm. and like love to the game of golf because it's a like people love golf yeah yeah like you of see course. a lot of, a lot of artists a lot of like you know athletes they love golf but the culture of the game is so inaccessible yeah. and it's so you know you know like people like the word racism is like is such a stingy word but it really is a lot of racism in the game and i want to take some of that out and i want to be someone who can influence the game to be more you know, accessible to people of color and people of lesser financial means and all that. And, you, and, you, and you're talking about, you know, just the comparisons of how these two entities made you feel. Golf is, you kind of feel, you know, secluded. You, you kind of feel like you're on the outside because of the color of your skin. But then you go to music and everybody is one. You know, when you're like, you're talking about the DJ and the producing, the writing, pulling up to the homies crib, like, let's, let's get it cracking. Yeah. Golf is yeah. not like that. Or a sport like golf isn't like that. It's more one-on-one. -on -one right, not, not, not traditionally, but I think it can be. And I think that, you know, as, as the times change and the tides change, like, mm -hmm. we'll see See, you know we'll see more and more people finding ways to make it accessible to you know for people like us and for people that want to get into it but can't that's dope man let's talk about your musical influences um i, I read again somewhere stevie wonder is one of your your big big homies the big influence. and it's his birthday today and it's his yeah i was about to say i was getting to that today's his birthday <laughs> um you yeah know, and i, I want to make sure we cover this because you know it's always great that you know the younger artists understand where they're where they come from and what they're, they're inspired by yeah, stevie yeah. wonder what's what's your favorite record from from stevie wonder um right now my favorite song he has an album called where i'm coming from mm -hmm. that i i didn't hear when i was a kid and I, I just discovered it recently and he has a song called think of me as your soldier mm -hmm. um that just like when i heard that like a few months ago it it smacked slapped me so hard like I, I couldn't believe I hadn't heard it. It's so beautiful. And then and then uh, he has some other joints on that. That's the same record that he has. Uh, if you really love yes. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you really. I love that song too. But anyways, uh, that album is crazy. And then the song As, I've been, I've been addicted yeah. to that one as well lately. And then so like the musical inspirations also bleed from like Shaka Khan to Marvin Gaye to even Rage Against the Machine. Your, your, your musical palette seems very, very, you know, diverse. And it, yeah. probably, it probably helps with the creation of your projects and even who you create with. You know, where, how do you bring some of that into what you do and, 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 and how you create? Because I, I, you mentioned something about, you know, rock and, uh, rock and R&B and incorporating, yeah. you know, heavy rock into your projects. Where does yeah. that where does that inspiration come from, and where does that how does that differentiate you from the the guys coming up? Um, it's something that you know 
obviously like I learned so much from my parents and I was put on to the history of music at a young age and like you know artists like Chuck Berry and Lil Richard who really like pioneered rock and roll right and they don't get the credit because of whatever reasons right you can mm -hmm. you can assume and you have like Elvis who gets the spotlight and the Beatles yes. and, and, they're, yeah. and they're both you know all these artists are amazing but there's a lot of artists that don't get their credit and usually it's the you know the black pioneers that get forgotten and of course and I I, I feel like it's it's uh it's one of those things that like you know it's uh it's important to to just know where you came from because the rock sound and all that like that's that's like that's us that's that's literally that's, us yeah that's so, rock so, so that's literally us yeah so all that so like i love r&b and i also love rock and and I, I i've been kind of experimenting with like putting r&b melodies and r&b types of harmonies over a bed of like heavier more aggressive rock type of music yeah so that's the rock and b sound that i'm developing i have a song called get by on the project it's kind of a taste of that but i have like a hundred ideas that are in that world that are going to keep coming out and 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 it's good that new artists like yourself are developing new envelopes to push because we can stay in the same box of the regular you know mumble r&b or the ballads or you know so on and so forth but when you incorporate yeah. things that we birth like rock and roll into an r&b genre again that we birth you become right. to, you you get something new that a lot of younger artists can latch on to and go on to. Yeah, now, exactly. Um, yeah. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's just when you, when you learn that you're a part of something, it makes it that you're more inclined to like dive into it, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you don't even know that you're a part of something. And, and it's that's, like, that's why you have to research. That's why you have to really understand yeah. where you come from. And, and it's good for you because, yeah, you have, you know, your family comes from, you know, a, a circle of music. So you're, you're, you're already ready to go. You're already in Yeah, I'm blessed. I'm lucky, man. So we got the new project High Tide, man. So you got Shmino on there, Tide mm -hmm. Alexander. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You got a lot of heavy hitters on there, man. Um, oh we yeah, can go, we can go. Those are the directions. homies. We can go collaborations. We can go um, comparisons to Low Tide. Um, mm -hmm. But the question I want to ask you is, High Tide now being out, is there a a pressure that's lifted off of your shoulder? Was this was this project? How important was this project to you? And what is the message you wanted to get across with this project specifically? Um, man, I mean, it, it, it's so important. It's like, you know, you put something out and it's out in the world forever. And I learned with kind of like the last couple years, like with Low Tide and the songs I put out before, like I learned how deeply music affects people. So getting messages from people who got fired from their job or... Mm -hmm divorced or were about to kill themselves and then decided not to because music inspired them and stuff like that and these are songs that we're making in like this is the studio right here in this garage and mm. we'll, we'll we'll be in there with the homies like laughing smoking drinking making songs and then like you end up making something that can change somebody's life so mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like recognizing like the impact of music influenced this project and i wanted to make sure that you know, it was a step up from Low Tide, and I brought in the homies to really help me glue it together. Saul was and Daniel Memi, they're in my band, and they're, you know, executive producers on the project who helped me figure out the flow and the transitions and some of the writing and all that. And, and it was just a more conscious effort to make something, you know, for the world that made us happy and that, you know, just projecting that energy out there. And you, it's, it's funny that you, you know, now that I'm getting to know you and, and hearing your music, it's you and Ty Dolla Sign have somewhat of a similar sound. You guys have somewhat of like, not background, but there's there's a connection there. So, you know, he's heavy in the rock and the R&B thing. You're, in, oh, yeah. introducing, you're introducing that, you know, through your platform. What was it like yeah. working with him and like the similarities that you see within yourself, you know, that you see in him? Man, it... It's like, it's like not even similarities. Like I'm like the biggest fan, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, I, like I came up listening to this man, like, you know, yeah. all throughout like high school and college and stuff. And like, they're, without a doubt, I'm influenced by his sound and his like harmonies and his runs and like his, his songwriting style and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So for me, it was crazy because I was a huge Thai fan. And then like the first person that I started working with was Thai. 
Mm. So when I came into the game, um, there was a guy, two guys, Sean Barron and Gary Leon, who work at Atlantic. I, I don't know if they still do, but at the time they were working at Atlantic and they're working with Ty and those guys I owe so much to because they opened their studio up to me before right. I was signed anywhere. And, and uh, you know, Ty would be in the studio. So I met right. Ty through being around there. And I actually, I have a song that I put out a while ago called Thursday. Mm. And the original version of Thursday was a beat that Ty made. And he gave me the beat to think of an idea for him. Wow. And then, and I wrote Thursday. And then I ended up, you know, doing a different, like remixing the beat, you know, later on. Yeah. And that was, that was like one of the first times we worked together. And then I started going up to his studio house and, yeah. and just kind of being around him and learning and, and uh, and yeah, I mean, working with him is dope because he is, like you said, he's a he's a rock star. He's a he's a musical. He has a musical family, and mm -hmm. he's he, he's someone who I think is like a bridge as well, where he gets the sounds of today, the sounds of you know the past and and whatever. He makes something that's forward thinking, but also nostalgic. So that's a goal of mine too. And big salute to Ty. And another artist that you know carries a different twang to their music from St. Louis. You got Shmino. Dude, super dope. Smino is, is awesome. super talented, and it's 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 artists like them and yourself included that don't make the traditional music. And when they come together right. as a fusion like that, you're gonna yeah. get something special. So describe your collaboration process with Smino. Man, Smino and I linked up. Uh, he moved out to LA. Like I don't know, it was like a year or so ago, and yeah. we got in, we got in the studio, and it was just dope. I mean like an instant connection, um, an appreciation for each other's ideas and music. And he's sitting on the piano, on the drums, on mm. all this. You mean like people may not know that he's like a fucking amazing drummer. I'm sorry if I'm cursing. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay. He's an incredible drummer, incredible uh, pianist. And, uh, and he makes a lot of the beats that he sings on too. So he's like, you know, someone who you, once you see them work, you develop like a deeper respect for Mm. And um, and working together with him is just creative because like you can't help but push boundaries and try new things and, and just like make something super dope. Is there anybody that you didn't get on this project that you, you know, you, you have something that didn't get cleared or whatever? Or because I know sometimes when you want to get your workout, you want to get your workout. Sometimes people take a little bit longer. Sometimes the people don't get emails and it's calls. Was there an artist that yeah. you wanted that you wanted specifically on this project that you, could, you couldn't get a hold or you couldn't get a grab on? Um, <laughs> there, like there is and there isn't. I mean, there's people like I, I'm a big believer in like the energy and, and the connection you have with the yes. artist that you're doing the song with. Yeah. So like I have I have friends like Snow, who Ooh. you know I really, My I, I really I'm looking forward to when we put out some of our stuff and like. And, and figure that out that would have been great on this project but we have like you know we have a, a, a dope chemistry in the studio and that's there's no rush on that when that comes out it'll be great yeah, and you gotta let that just build up <laughs> yeah exactly and, and and you know for like the other ones I everything I, I feel like everything I wanted to come out on this project came out and mm -hmm. uh there's there's more records with Ty that I want to put out there's nice. uh nice. you know the big bro usher maybe there's something Ooh. so, <laughs> he's, so uh, he's getting back in the album mode too so you got to catch him right now while you can exactly he's so, in that creative you know, mode right now yeah so i i want to i want to keep working with people and and uh and just make more songs that are like true like you know true collaborations like sid and i are are, are good homies smino mm -hmm. um topaz ty mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. You know, these are all people that like I actually have like an energy with, and I and I, I'm a believer of that energy coming through on the record. You know, one song before we get into your performances, um, I want you to pick one song off this project, High Tide, which is available Apple Music, Spotify, Title, uh, mm -hmm. Google Music, anywhere you can stream. What's one song that you believe will represent you, or for someone who's never heard of you, and this is an introduction right now? What's the one song if you had to pick one that will represent your style? you as a oh, person man. you as oh, a musical man. genius come on I, I gotta oh put you on man the spot. don't do this to me you're you gonna you make me spot. pick pick my yes. favorite kid come Please on dude me. no I can't. listen no matter what you say every parent got their favorite kid and every nah, musician has their favorite sometimes when, song, when one kid is tripping the other one is being cool so you like you <laughs> man all right, also, all, right for, all, right, all right for today for today for today what's for the today? movie 
for today? I'm gonna what say, would you feel? I'm gonna say made for you. Okay. Because made for you has like so like I've been saying one. get by in some in some interviews, but I think made for you is a great example of the R and B and some of the rock because of like when you get to the second chorus, you have some like distortion guitar coming in and all that, which is like kind of where I'm coming from, fusing those sounds and there's a yeah, there's a made, longer there's a long guitar riff in that one, right? Yeah, that one, made, yeah. made made for you has made for you is like mainly like a guitar driven track but then at yeah. the end the guitar start to get layered up in a little bit more of a rock type of way even though it's yeah. still extremely yeah. r&b yeah. and and you know just like yeah that one and sid just okay. destroys that beat she was born to sing on stuff like that so and, mellow uh, so beautiful so 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 soft so the beautiful is, so the tone is so perfect on that uh, on that on that yeah. record yeah um She's incredible. All right, so so listen, man. Uh, are you you wanna you wanna set up some stuff to perform real quick? Give us a couple joints or yeah, for they show. Sure. I was just um getting a little microphone set up by the piano. Right here on Revolt TV. My name is Low Key, and I'm sitting with Laving Cali right now on mic check. You know, we're gonna talk about his new album, High Tide, his inspirations, the man being a supreme golf player, uh, and he still is rocking the golf uh, right now. He's just out there yes, perfecting that swing. But right now, we're going to get into the live performance aspect, and he's going to play some records off that High Tide Project, which you can see, which you can stream, like I said, on Apple's title and Spotify. So without further ado, Laven, do your thing for the people, man. For sure. First Thank impression you. right here, baby. Let's get a crack. I appreciate the introduction, man. All day, all day. <laughs> Reach 
playing some joints off of high tide you saw the keyword listen it, it, it seems like you don't need no more piano lessons brother it seems like you, <laughs> you're, you're, you're at where you need to be it seems like <laughs> they, they've, can't, they've come in handy but um, I want to thank you for joining me right here on uh, mic check right here revolt thank TV um, Laven a lot of things are going on right now with this quarantine and before I let you go I have to ask you this question I'm not sure of how much of a fan you are of these two, but Nelly and Ludacris are battling in the versus battle this weekend. And that's the topic of every Zoom conversation, every IG yep. Live conversation. So I have to get your input. Who do you think is going to win, Nelly or Ludacris? Man, we're going to have to watch, dude, because that's another thing you can't make <laughs> me choose. Nelly and Luda, that's like, you know, that's my childhood right there. Everything yeah, from Country yeah. Grammar to Nellyville. Word of mouth is the first CD I ever bought. So I nice. can't even. Ah, damn. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, if you ask Smino, he'll say Nelly. And if you ask someone from the A, they'll say Luda. But they're yeah. head and head. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yikes. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Listen, man, we're going to watch that shit together this Saturday. The, the culture's going to win, okay? We'll that, the, like culture that. Been, the culture's been winning. Shout out <laughs> to Swizz and Timbo. But, yes, um, thank you to them. The culture is winning with this new project from you, Hot Tide. Uh, thank please, you, man. Everybody, everybody, make sure you get this project. This young man is destined for greatness. Uh, thank you for the performances. And uh, please stay safe with the homies out there. Wear that mask when you go and golf, brother. Please stay safe because there we go. This ain't over yet. But um, right. man, I'm 2020, as I know you have big plans. Hopefully, we can get outside and get some performances. New collaborations yeah. coming. And whenever yeah. you want to have a have a talk or a new project, new single, please bring it right here to Revolt. Mic check, because you know we got you covered, brother. All right? Definitely. Appreciate My you, man. man. Stay safe. I'll Stay see you up. on the flip. All right, peace.